hello, look, Sander, hello. I have my camera. Let me go ahead and turn it on. All right, let me get you up on here. Hello. Then. Yo, hello. Hold on, let me bring you up and, and put this in here. Here we go. Uh, Luxander. And pronouns? Uh, it, it's. Based. Yes. Based, it, it's her. All right, welcome, Luxander. It is wonderful to see you. How are you doing? Yeah. Today? Oh, I'm doing so great. It's excellent to talk to you. Uh, I've been on your stream a couple times, but I think this yeah. is the first time we've been face to face. So that's lovely. Yeah, I don't think we've done video in the past. I've, I've, I have not. Uh, video is frustrating sometimes, but I've got a relatively good system set up now with the way we have everything working in the background. So now I'm able to do video a little bit easier. Um, Very nice. Yeah, so I'm glad that we're able to talk face to face. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, welcome to Signal Night. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm really, really, really happy to have you on. Um, yeah. And we can talk about basically whatever you'd like, but if you'd like to, I mean, I already know for a fact that a lot of the imps are familiar with you, um, but if you want to uh, let the imps who might not be know what you're all about and what you do, uh, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, and then and then we'll go from there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So there is there. I think there is a decent amount of crossover uh, between the Hordies and the Imps. They called they're called the Himpies. That's the oh my god. Everybody has a crossover <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm the name. dragon streamer. You're the demon streamer. I'm the dragon streamer. My my group is called the Horde, like as in a dragon's horde. Mm. So yeah. Um, yeah. I see yeah. Your, I'm a streamer. Your notifications calling for your Hordies. I love that. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm a streamer person. I've been, I've actually made YouTube videos for like my entire hormonal transition, which started in 2015. And then wow. like I, I was doing random shit before that, but I started kind of posting as like a diary, like a, you know, a transition diary. And then gradually it's been more and more politics. So now I stream three times a week and that's like a pretty consistent schedule. I talk about like all kinds of stuff. I mean, I mean, I think that we talk about a lot of similar stuff like mm -hmm. we hit we hit hard on the politics um i find it like actually i think that one of the things i'd be interested in sort of talking to you about is the kind of how you get locked into one style of content yeah um like someone was asking me recently what would i do as a content creator like what would i stream about if there were no profit incentive like if i wasn't constrained by the need to stay consistent in the algorithm or whatever. And it's like, yeah. I would stream about all of the stupid shit that I'm interested in, frankly. I would stream yeah. about all kinds of random stuff, but um, I'm kind of like, shoot into the politics now. Um, I know you try to do like gaming streams and things like that. Do you feel like that content just doesn't do as well? Um, Yeah, but I mean, it depends. Like, I mean, uh, tonight is a night that, that, that doesn't have as large raw numbers. Um, as like when I'm covering a huge issue that's like relevant in the news or whatever, but mm -hmm. also, um, I guess I, I guess it like, once I do all the math in my brain, uh, I just don't care. Um, like I, it bothers me sometimes. I hate seeing lower numbers. Obviously that's like literally how it's designed. And I hate it when YouTube sends you those little passive aggressive messages like, Oh, it looks like not as many people are clicking on this video, but <laughs> yeah, I just do nine it anyway. out of 10. <laughs> like, I mean, I've been posting, uh, especially this year, the last like six or seven months, I've been deliberately, uh, re broadening the content that I post. Um, mm -hmm. because I just think it's better for the channel and it, it, I've been rewarded with a lot of growth as a result, even though some of the videos don't get as good raw numbers views wise. Um, mm -hmm. I think it brings more people in and like, I don't know, for me, it's like, uh, uh, there is a, there is a deceptive incentive when it comes to like certain types of content, for example, drama. Uh, drama content will always get clicks. It will always get you not just clicks. It will get you a lot of clicks. Uh, mm -hmm. It will make you, it'll like, you'll get like 800 people in your stream and it'll be like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened. I feel awesome about this. Um, but uh, they never last. They never stick around. They are extremely fair weather uh, viewers. Uh, they often don't even necessarily subscribe. They won't check out your other videos. They won't chat in your chat. Um, so uh, I, I don't like that type of content. I try to keep as a uh, a topical thing. When I think there's something really important to be said about a piece of drama, 
Um, and I deliberately don't chase drama anymore. Um, I think I was tempted to do that a lot more when I was smaller. Um, but I realized just by observing other people's channels, um, how it becomes a, uh, it's, it becomes, it's like a pigeonhole. Like you get pigeonholed into drama content so hard that you have to start making up drama, um, or, or starting shit with other people. And, uh, I was just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that shit. Um, like I, I have very organic conflicts with other people. <laughs> when I conflict with someone, They're honest, I yeah. feel like it's because I have a real issue with them or whatever, or they mm -hmm. have some kind of issue with me, whether that's, uh, you know, that's, those are usually the types of conflicts I have. I don't go seeking new conflicts, uh, except for with conservatives. I like to beef with those guys cause fuck them. Um, but, uh, but I don't know, like, uh, I think that like, at least for me, if I was like, if there was no monetary incentive, um, I would probably post slightly less videos frequently. Uh, you know, the one thing that I do that's like the big pressure is that I try to make sure that we have a video out every day. Uh, mm -hmm. so which means I, which does affect that when I stream, I try to do a couple of segments each day and it would be a pressure release to not do that. But also YouTube right now just favors that daily posting so much and it has been good for the channel. And it also gives me an excuse to do segments talking about weird stuff, um, in a certain way. So I feel like that's one area where I'm willing to sort of compromise with the monstrous algorithm, uh, to, you know just go okay all right i'll come up with a with a conversation to post or a thing to come to talk about every day segment wise uh i'm pretty uh uh you know i i i have a lot of people who will remind me to not uh i struggle with it a lot like personally with like this idea that i need to be doing more constantly um but i also have a lot of people in my life who will be like uh, you're super tired. You've been doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, sit down. Don't stream today or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You probably shouldn't stream today. Do something. You know, do something with us today. You know, let's go out or whatever. And I really appreciate that. And it's something that I've actively sought out from my partners and my friends. You know, uh, because I don't want to get eaten alive by an algorithm. Um, e even though I am ambitious for success on this website. Uh, so I don't know. It's it's hard for me to say. Sometimes I do feel frustrated by the fact that like it is so hard to do like um, variety content that there's like, it feels it feels like there's an invisible pressure to like uh, push you in a certain direction or towards a certain type of content or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like it's generally good to ignore that to a certain degree. You have to like push through it because uh, you will get those people who matter more you will get you will cultivate a fan base that is interested in you and your opinions as opposed to just topical fan bases that are going to ditch the moment you switch topics which you never really want that because some topics just won't last forever you know yeah so that I was a long like, response but no you're good <laughs> i i like at this point i almost like use whatever clickbait thing of the week is happening as my like title of my stream and mm -hmm. i go annoying with the titles of my stream i'm all capsing I'm like, sis is a slur, lam out. Like it's it's yeah. all stupid. And then I spend, I don't change them anymore during stream. Like I used to change it while the topic changed uh -huh. and now I just leave it there. And I'm like, okay, you're gonna suffer through my 20 minute tangent on linguistics for a second. Oh, for sure. As, you, yeah. I think that's <laughs> totally wise. Like, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I will do the same thing. Like uh, it, Twi Twitch is more weird about topic titles and stuff where they want you to like change the topic for whatever you're doing. But on YouTube, it's like, nah, whatever, just like, if people are coming to your stream, let them come in and ask questions and chat. It'll, you know, if they're interested enough, they'll stick around and they'll ask questions and then maybe they'll meet some friends in the chat or something. Yeah. I don't, I, I think that like the, the clickbait game is just a fact of the matter on YouTube. It's like, it's sometimes very annoying, but everybody just has to deal with it. Like there's no, it's so deeply like ingrained that there's not much you can do. Like, yeah. Sometimes people point do. it out and it's like, what, okay, what did you think my job was? Like, yeah. That's I'm sorry, but I get more money the more people come in and hang out. Like, I mean, you've pointed it out that the the White Leaf website, which like I love being a member of the White Leaf family. It just feels like you're so legit as a streamer once you're there. Uh, True. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. But True. then like people can directly donate and it's like the number one income stream for me. Like what? Patreon is up there, but the number one income stream for me is direct donations during stream. So like the more obnoxious my title is, the more people are going to come in and hang out. And like, I want, I would like my chill hangout streams to have like a decent number of people in them. And that's how you know that you're actually building a community and not just like, click baiting out to like the lowest common denominator audience is like because you do sometimes like I've watched your streams where you're doing like hard hitting politics and then you shift gears and you're like, all right, we're gonna play a game now. And yeah. the the one third of people who remain for that, you know, those are the real ones like well, those are the and, actual and sometimes you like, you'd be surprised how many people will end up sticking to um, you always take a certain hit, um, you know, when you switch topics, um, especially if it's a big gear shift. But uh, people end up sticking by. Uh, people end up having a more a more fun time than they thought they were gonna. And those people are also more likely to be like, "Wow, I was surprised by this. This was a memorable experience. I'm gonna stick around and uh, come back next time." Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I have it such like that. Uh, I I do a warm up for an hour at the beginning of every stream, regardless of what my topic is. People can come in and then I'll tell, hey, we're about to talk about that. Sit down, get comfy, hear me talk about birds, hear me talk about, uh, you know, my trip to Canada, my uh, my uh, rant about something that's annoying me on the internet, whatever, the random stuff that I'm just warming up my voice for, talking to random people in chat, watching random memes that people send me. Uh, and I think that stuff is uh, is actually great uh, it also encourages people to like just get comfortable and i don't know yeah there's a certain aspect of truth to the idea that like people just like click through and flip through shit all the time like there's like a huge culture online especially in the era of TikTok, of people basically doing like fast forward channel surfing where there's like oh nope didn't get me in two seconds didn't get me two seconds but those people are in a hell of their own making and i can't reach them so <laughs> Uh, True. Good, luck, good luck to them. Uh, I hope that they have fun letting an algorithm think for them. But uh, I am going to, you know, keep building a community like the one that I have of people who come back, who connect with one another, who uh, are, are make an awesome chat environment, who often make cool recommendations toward to, toward me for stuff to react to. Um, it's a way better environment. So. Yeah, I don't know. It is hard. It is. It's not easy because I mean, YouTube does make you feel bad about it. I mean, I feel, I stress about it. If you ask, if you were to ask Doe about it, you know, Doe could tell you like, uh, like how often I get stressed out about YouTube, which is a lot. But also, Doe reminds me to not stress about YouTube so much. So it's like it's one of those things where it's like. Uh, the system is designed to make you stress about it because they want you to constantly be churning out content. They want you to constantly be churning out the highest uh, view count content possible, but also um, they're not right about everything. Even though they own and operate the platform, um, they don't know what builds, like they don't know how to build actual communities and they only know how to approximate the vague uh, signifiers of like, oh, well, this is a content creator who posts stuff regularly and they're doing good. <gasps> that must mean that post content regularly is the most important thing when it's like, no, actually they're posting content regularly because they enjoy making stuff. You know, it's, they got it backwards, but you know, whatever. So, um, yeah. I've yeah. totally stolen from you the whole concept of the first hour chill time, like good. just unabashedly. I mean, it's great. And uh, people come in and I'm like, I'm like, hey, you're coming in. You see the title of the stream. We're just hanging out. But if you so if you don't want to just chill, like, that's fine. Leave a like before you leave. Come back in an hour. Like, yeah. we'll get to the serious stuff in a bit because I I struggle even like sometimes you're you're feeling reluctant to do your stream. And like, I know you don't even have a schedule anymore. No, I don't think that. I would stream enough if I didn't have a schedule like with my version of ADHD. I just I feel like that. it would be very for, tough for, for me. me I so. was just like uh, the schedule is it's so artificial to me that like I I uh, my schedule is like the videos per day basically um, as long as I'm making enough uh, video like segments that I can meet my videos per day then I'm happy I but when I was trying to f like push myself to do like every other day or every three days streams, it was like I felt like I was constantly reaching for content to talk about and I'm like, man, that doesn't that doesn't make me feel good at all. 
Like I want to, I want to come to stream and I want to be excited to talk about it. I want to be ready to make people laugh, to make people think about stuff. I want to be whatever. I want to have something driving me. So maybe, you know, it's probably not optimal or whatever, but I think it makes my content like a hundred times better quality. Um, you know, and I want, I, I just want quality more than I care about the, the quantity. So yeah, I, I, I feel threw like the away opposite. the schedule thing. Yeah. Like what you're when you're saying like you feel like you're digging for things to fill like stream time with, I'm like, I almost feel like I am I like want to take a break. And first of all, I can't afford it. But like second of all, I'm like, I wish that I could just game tonight, but there's yet another horrendous thing that I need to talk about. And I'm I'm my own editor and so I'm really slow getting that content out on the channel. So it's like the later I cover it on stream the even later it comes out on my channel yeah. um so like there is like i i feel it really difficult to have healthy boundaries around my work um and like maybe that's something that you faced as well with like having to change your schedule yeah i mean i i have done i've changed my approach to stream a lot of times since i started um like uh many i've done so many different things but for me i like i've realized that the number one thing i need to do is uh uh is is like i i have to to make sure that i don't burn out that is my number mm -hmm. one thing like avoiding burnout has to be the number one priority because if i burn out it will kill everything it will it will i won't be able to make streams i won't be able to make my video times uh it will affect the quality of my stuff so i basically have uh have ceded to the burnout monster inside of me and said very well then my lord I will obey you. You say, be a lazy fuck today, then I shall be a lazy fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, like that's just how it goes. Like I, I uh, burnout is like the worst feeling on the planet. And I've burned out many times in this, in mm -hmm. this job. It's really easy to do. It's a lot, It's a, I have a harder time burning out now than I used to because uh, things aren't as toxic. And I've changed my content a lot with like, uh, it took a lot of effort to like, over the course of my channel, I've made a lot of different changes on what I was doing. I, I started doing um, a lot of news reacts and a lot of panels. And then uh, I was moving away from panels, so I was doing uh, gen like more general content reacts, where I was like, I wanna talk about, let, let me react to this funny video, let me react to this weird thing. And I had a lot of fun with that stuff, and I got really into that for a while. We had some, I had some killer stuff that people that haven't even seen. That's right, you imps who are listening right now, there's some stuff on my channel you have not even seen. Uh, holy mackerel, go look it up. But uh, but I used to do some of these wacky react segments that ended up being really cool. And then I, the, the debate scene started blowing up and it became super toxic and I, I found less and less time on stream uh, to talk about other random shit that I thought was funny. Um, and also I was like, I felt like I was constantly having to reply to all of this crap that was being slung at me. And then of course we had this huge political shit, this like shift in the right wing, just going crazy anti-trans. And I felt I'm still like, here. Oh, my oh. camera died. I'm sorry. I'm still here. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, and then, um, you know, and then I, I found myself in a place where I was like, okay, well now we got to react to this all the time. And so for a, for a, a solid period of time, it was like, wow, what happened to all of the like stuff that I used to do? Um, that was like, you know, the random funny stuff, the stuff that makes people laugh, the stuff that I'm really proud of where I feel like it's my, the most demon mama stuff that I do. Uh, and I had, I've had to take an, a, a serious, like a, a real like strength approach to just, okay, I got to make myself do these segments, even if they don't do perfect numbers or whatever, because this is the type of content that I know that I get joy from, that my core audience loves, and that makes people become addicted to my content in a way that is actually good. They actually mm -hmm. want to come back and see that video that makes them laugh. You know, I, I think about like, um, I think about like, sometimes I think about other streamers like that I, that I really respect or that I watch a lot of, like I find myself watching a ton of Moist Critical, um, uh, Charlie, you know? Uh, and, and I'm like, why do I watch this guy so often? And I know it's because every time he talks about some wacky ass shit that he finds on the internet, whether it's a TikTok about fucking giants or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, he, he, he discovered this Tartaria shit 
uh, was one that made me laugh really hard, or he's talking about a random comic book, or the Gollum game. Like, this shit makes me die laughing. And so I'm like, that is awesome. And then I go, I find myself, I want to go watch the next Charlie video, regardless of what it's on, because the last one that was about something I had no idea that it was like, like what the fuck is the Gollum game? Laughed my ass off, ended up wanting to watch another one. So I think about that and I go, well, Maybe he's gone to something and maybe I ought to do that more. I mean, that's not my only inspiration. And I've been doing this even, I've been making this effort even since before I started watching Charlie again. But, uh, but you know, it's like, I don't know. I guess I'm rambling at this point. But the point is, is that I mean, like the content you, you machine. You pull inspiration from a lot of people, right? Is yeah. basically the idea. I try to. Uh, and also I try to think like, well, you know, what is it that makes you know, what is it that makes a, a, a YouTuber like beloved, you know? And what do I have that makes people like me? And cause I mm -hmm. know there's people out there. I know there's imps in my audience who are like, really love my shit. And that is like the best feeling in the world. So I'm like, well, what are they, what are they, what's resonating with them? And how do I f let that flourish? Because it's not the drama stuff. I can tell you that much, even mm -hmm. though like, when I, that's even though I can do a good ass drama stream, it's not the drama that made it happen. People didn't watch the shit out of my Illuminati drama just because it was Illuminati drama. The feedback I got on that was because of the way that I did it, because I do it a different way than a lot of other people would approach it. A lot of people would, you know, spend a ton of time fixating on, on, on comments and things like that, or what this person said about it. Instead, I'm like, no, we're going from the beginning, you know, and I don't know. I do it. I just try to find those things and stick with those. And the truth is that there's a lot of variance between creators. What works for one creator might not work well for another creator, and that's okay and good. And honing what makes you special is super important and valuable, in my opinion. Even though uh, that is a painful ass process when you have the 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 al the dark algorithm hovering over you at all times, it does hurt. It's like psychologically damaging. But yeah, yeah, psychic damage for sure. I, you know, it's funny. I always think of myself as being like such a serious streamer because I do go, I do go hard with the whole like, this is a genocide. We need to get out of this yeah. country, like arm yourselves kind of rhetoric. But then also, I'm like, one of the things that my chat seems to really find amusing is when we get off track on like either a generally like a sex tangent or specifically a phalloplasty tangent. Uh -huh. And then I like, I crocheted myself a custom packer because uh, I don't want uh, balls. So yeah. I just have this crochet penis that I like keep on my desk and flop around sometimes. <laughs> and uh, people seem to think that's enjoyable. <laughs> so you just got to well, keep things cool. fun. You just got to yeah. keep things spicy. Well, I mean, I, I do think that type of stuff is like, that's the, that's the, the, the those touches are the types of things that are like gonna, uh, they're gonna appeal to your, to, to, to people who are, that can't get that anywhere else. You know, they're gonna find mm -hmm. the things that are unique to you. And uh, I think we need more of that. I I think that like uh, even if obviously okay if you if you want to be successful on YouTube just like the magic ticket to success well the way to do that is to uh, is to copy what like um, those like uh, those content farms do where they like make a, like a five minute hack video. It's like, dun, 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 and it has like them cutting a piece of butter and it's just a faked hack that like could have been invented by an AI. And you make a hundred thousand of those videos. Uh, you get us, you get some seed capital from a rich family member. You make 9,000 of those videos. You repost it on four different channels with slightly different editing. Uh, that's the real, that's the real way to make it big on YouTube, but that's fucking trash. Um, and I don't want to make trash. So, uh, and I don't think, I think a lot of people who come into YouTube don't want to make trash. They want to make stuff that's like, that has that magic. Um, and that means you have to get really sneaky about how you play the YouTube game and that uh, tr traditional knowledge doesn't always apply uh, to, to being able to make magic, you know, content that has some magic or oomph to it or spirit or whatever you want to call, whatever woo-woo term you want to use for it. Like it connects um, to people somehow. Like, yeah. like fundamentally what it's about is finding some way to connect to your audience, whether that's like making them laugh or making them think, making them feel the urge to share something with someone. Like, yeah. it's interesting. Do you mind if I show the crochet peeper? Cause I have oh, it. Please, um, go ahead. It's not, no, it's not great. like graphic, no, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, in case people are oh curious, God. this is, 
It's like basically the smallest size that I could potentially get on a phalloplasty, but sometimes I do things like, you know, just like <gasps> be absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go ham. Or wear it like as a nose. We've done that before. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. Boom. Anyway, I gotta do. I, I need the. I need the. You, the. Uh, I need the sus sound for that one. The the old schnozberry <laughs> uh, quote. God damn. True. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that, see, this is why it's because the dicks emoji comes out, and yeah. that's what I'm going for. <laughs> there we go. People Absolutely love dicks. Beautiful. Okay, it's just the way it is. It's just the rule of the of existence. People love dicks. Um. Even even when and they Christian. cannot lie. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the. Oh yeah, so to talk about the seriousness thing, um I deliberately have like uh stepped back a little bit from from constantly covering trans politics. Yeah. At least that type of trans politics. And the reason is complicated, but basically um uh uh I realized that like I am an entertainer. And, and I know I knew that. It's not like I ever forgot that or that I didn't know that. I've always said that from the get-go, from the literal beginning of my stream. My OGest, OGest um, uh, fans will tell you, like, I've always said, like, I am not your savior. I'm not the movement of the left. You know, I do believe very strongly in the things that I say. Uh, you know, I am very clear about that. But I'm an entertainer. I'm here to... I often say an edutainer. I like to talk mm -hmm. about things that are interesting and also entertaining. Um, and with that, I've realized that like, um, that like part of my job, so to say, part of my role is not just to sort of constantly uh, react or, or, or cover uh, every bad thing that happens uh, or every, you know, horrible propaganda thing, but instead to, give people some strength so that they can fight those things on their own terms and so that they can survive. Um, and sometimes, and I realized that required me to adapt, to adopt a different strategy to the way that I was doing things because there was a long time where I was just covering this stuff constantly and it was a deluge because, mm -hmm. um, and I, I actually ha realized to a certain degree that like I had been ignoring my own advice. Um, when I used to do a lot of debates, people used to ask me like, how do you deal with like a gish gallop? Like, how do you deal with, like, a conservative that just comes on and starts rattling off a bunch of misinformation or whatever? And I always said that, like, you have to plug the shit pipe before you can clean up the shit. Like, you have to just ignore the gish gallop and go for the throat. You have to be like, wow, it's really great that you've dumped all this garbage all over the place. But, uh why don't you shut the fuck up and stop being such a snowflake because you can, I can make up a hundred things too. Did you know that the other day the Democrats uh, had a victory in whatever place that I make up off my ass? Yeah, guess what? Two people can play that game. You have to delegitimize their gish gallop. You have to not give, you have to can't, you can't sit there and try and clean up every splash of shit that they throw everywhere. You have to mm -hmm. clog the pipe and then take care of the situation afterwards. Um, sometimes you just ignore that stuff until it, until you have control of the conversation. And I realized that that same thing applies when the Republican strategy is to blast out as many hateful propaganda pieces and bills as they possibly can all over the place, that it's an exhaustion tap tactic. They are trying to swarm you with things that don't matter or things that matter, but only contextually uh, and overwhelm your, your, I mean, that's literally where the, can you hear the signal thing that you hear that people hear me say all the time, can you hear the signal is because I'm like, there's so much noise. And so, uh, you know, at least in my role as like an edutainer or as like an internet, you know, person, like I realized that responding to every single, at least for me, responding to every single negative thing about trans people that happened was not a winning tactic and that I could do more good by, um, you could do more good by just taking some time to do different stuff, um, to, to choose those those battles when I talk about it, to choose them carefully and make them uh, powerful and incisive and travel far. Um, and then also spend time just making people feel better uh, and, uh, and getting some energy back uh, and also encouraging people to, to do the same, to like, you know, uh, pick the battles that matter because they're they're going to keep dumping this crap out and a lot of them are just them making noise. It's just a bunch of whining bullshit that doesn't mean anything. Like, uh, you know, 
uh, it doesn't matter that they're mad about about uh, Bud Light all that much. Make fun of them <laughs> yeah. and move on. Like, um, they're, yeah, they're mad you about can make fun of them. Every day. Yeah, for yeah sure. like, sure, make fun of them. But like, I'm not saying don't talk about them at all. It's just like, I think there's a, there's a tendency, like, I mean, I mentioned this in an earlier conversation when I was talking with Vivian about like, um, about how on Twitter so many people feel this pressure to reply all the time, which just ends up boosting it more. And it, it leads to their accomplish their goal being accomplished. Their goal isn't to like, um, isn't to like win over new people by being an internet fascist necessarily. Sure, sometimes they're they're hoping for that, but they're not going to win many people that way. Their goal is to exhaust everyone else, to distract and to tank basically, so that they can buy time to push through more heinous shit. And I think we just. I wanted to make a change to the way that I did it because it was draining me. It was draining my community. I wanted to give energy back in one way or another. So I've, I've, I've toned down uh, the amount, the sheer volume of serious stuff that I cover uh, and instead made the ones that I do cover hit a little harder and spent other time doing other things teaching people about things, giving people energy, uh, uh, talking about topics that matter a lot to me that are tangential or that are connected, but that aren't the immediate thing because I couldn't handle it anymore. And because I think it was, if it was affecting me to that degree, I can't even imagine what it was affecting like the broader community as a whole. Anyway, that was a, yeah. a long ramble, but I wanted to make it make sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing kind of a similar thing where I'm trying to like, even when I'm talking about the serious stuff, like we have our hour chill every time and like, I am also trying to weaponize my power as an influencer in the sense that, you know, I started working out like pretty hardcore regular basis in like March. Yeah. And so I'm like sharing my progress with stream and I'm encouraging people to go out and like start exercising. I've had several people tell That's me based. that they've started exercising. I've had several people tell me that they started therapy Amazing. because I was encouraging people to do that stuff. And it's like, yeah, I want to weaponize my position as like a, a like a, a, a waypoint for people to like get their justified frustration out and have their feelings validated and then also just try to be a human being. Mm -hmm. um, and I realize we have been already talking for like a good chunk of time, like maybe sometime off stream, uh, I would love to talk to you about like outdoor hobbies yeah. because I have just be this burning passion to become an outdoors person, which is awful because I live in Kansas and it's 90 degrees every oh. day. <laughs> uh, well, I, mean, I like want to bicycle have, we have so a shared, bad. We have a shared passion uh, as you may have I don't know. I don't. I don't want to be uh, like assume that you watch all my my like social media feeds or anything. But you, you may post have seen... pictures from the outdoors, yeah. yeah and been... I'm like, okay, oh, she likes camping. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been. <laughs> I've been. It's been something I have been passionate about my whole life. And then for a while, uh, in my 20s, like especially my late 20s, I just got. It was like a never-ending deluge of life shit happening, and I I I was sick. And then I started streaming and I got so distanced from all this stuff that I used to do. And like, um, I'm not like a fitness person, you know, I'm not like into the like the workouts and stuff, but I, I fucking love nature and I love hiking and I love bird watching. And I loved, I used to love to go kayaking and, and, uh, and, you know, foraging and all these different things that I used to be really into that I got away from. I love hunting from. for morel mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. I used to, I used to get, I used to be really into all that stuff. And so I've been really aiming to bring that back, um, into my life and I've had a lot of success with it. And, uh, so we're, we're definitely on a vibe. I'd, I'd, I'd also, I'd love to talk about that another time, uh, whether on stream or off, but, um, but yeah, I, I think that's awesome that you've been like, it's something it's not not in the same exact way but i've i've been encouraging uh as a topic and as a general attitude in my community uh and in myself it's it's a it's a mutual thing i want i i want to do it myself and i also want to encourage other people to do it which is to to change the way that we engage with the internet um i think certain events that have happened over the last few years have prompted me to rethink how my relationship with the internet changed uh, slowly over time. Um, and I think a lot of people's has, and some people like their relationship with the internet is just fundamentally different than mine. Um, I want to encourage people to use the internet as a tool that enhances real life, as opposed to a, like a parasite that continues to eat more and more of your real life until real life is like the staging ground for your con for more content creation. Even when you're not a content creator necessarily. I think that's, it's like a poisonous mentality that it's no one's fault. Every platform is encouraging you to do it. And, but it, but 
I, I think it's awesome that you're encouraging people to engage with uh, exercise, engage with, with um, the world, the real physical world, and find ways to uh, connect online life and with the real world in, in a way that's beneficial towards the real life and not the other way around. Um, yeah. Well, we're, we're kind of coming up on the end of our time, um, but I want to say this has been a fucking awesome conversation, um, really good topic uh, that you brought up. And, um, oh, sorry, is my does my mic need to be boosted? I'm sorry about that. I can boost my, uh, my mic up a little bit. Um, yeah, you've been, it, like, a little bit quieter than pretty much all the guests so far. No! Oh, well. <laughs> uh, God damn it. It's, it's, I've had mic issues today, and I'm going to boost it up. There we Honestly, go. the Go Hopefully XLR is bit. like the most finicky piece of equipment I have. It's such a piece of shit. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, that's. I mean, my my interface has been fine. I just my my usual audio f workflow has broken for an unknown reason, and uh, hopefully hopefully this audio is a little bit stronger and a little bit better uh, uh, going forward. I apologize for the uh, apologize for the low audio level. Um, anyway. Uh, if you could shout out your channel and stuff one more time, I would love to be able to let all the imps follow you, those who don't already. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Yes. Um, I'm Luxander. Uh, I have a website. It's luxander.net. I stream on YouTube, um, and I have the fancy website with the custom emojis and all that. Um, I'm on Blue Sky now, and I, my Twitter I'm really trying to step away from. I basically only use it to find out what people are talking about for the stream uh, topics. And... Um, yeah, I mean, come hang out on uh, Thursdays, Tuesdays, and Sundays if y'all want to, like, chill and vibe and get mad occasionally. <laughs> Increasingly more shit posting is happening. So, yeah, we try to have fun, and uh, and we talk about dicks a lot. So <laughs> thank you for having this whole thing, Demon Mama. I love Absolutely. these um, these call-in streams. They're always so fun, and it's always so great to talk to you. Well, it was uh, absolutely wonderful to speak with you as well. Thank you so much for coming on, uh, you know. It's been great. <laughs> there goes the camera. The camera dies right at the end. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you.